Boom, we're back. It's Mind Pump Time, the best fitness and entertainment podcast in the universe. Today's giveaway is a fun one. Maps Aesthetic. We're going to give away free access to Maps Aesthetic. This is the program that Adam used to get his pro card as a physique competitor. I know it doesn't look like it now, but he used to be a champion physique competitor. Anyway, great program. Here's how you can win access to that for free. Leave a comment in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications. If we pick your comment, we'll notify you and you have free access to that incredible program. One more thing before we start this incredible show. MAPS Anabolic and the No BS Six Pack Formula have been combined in the month of October and discounted heavily. We've slashed the price. You can get both together right now for $59.99. That's a savings of over $100. If you're interested, head over to mapsoctober.com. All right, here comes the show. Hey, I tried a new uh, a new supplement again. <laughs> And I keep throwing. Oh, that's a surprise! Have, I Shocker. think I've talked about Agmatine before. Have you guys heard of this? This no. is no no affiliation or anything, but it's a uh, no. I would remember if you actually. So said it's that. it's in some pre workout supplements. It's this sounds like a terrible like superhero. It sounds a, like a, Agmatine, like generic Arginine. Yeah. Wow, close. Oh. It's a metabolite of Arginine. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's a neuromodulator. It decreases depression in some studies. It decreases the perception of pain. In fact, mm. it helps with uh, withdrawal from opiates. So pe- they've done studies with people who take opiates, addicted, stop taking them, take agmatine, it helps with that. Increases nitric oxide a lot. So it's it's one. So in, in terms animals of or in human human studies too. So if you want to like get a better pump. Hmm. then th- there's almost nothing that I've seen that, according to the literature, is as good as this, besides pharmaceuticals. Anyway, threw a little bit into my pre-workout cocktail, and I loved it. Wow. Got a great pump, and I could tell it's got a little bit of a stimulant effect, so I feel like it was... So maybe if someone's a little sensitive to stimulants, but it's not like caffeine or anything Well, that's like that. kind of how I felt about, the, you know, Organifi's like uh, the red juice the, with the beetroot <sighs> powder or whatever. Like that stuff, like for me, is always given like that great energy without the stimulants involved. And it's, that's, I've recommended it multiple uh, players on the team because like that's a big concern. I like it too. They I, don't want the caffeine. Yeah, Agmatine is definitely more of a stimulant than the red juice. The red juice oh, is super, yeah, red oh, juice really? is, su- is actually a good way to get off stimulants, right? If you're going off stimulants. Let's do the red juice for a little while to help with the side effects. Agmatine is like, it's not like caffeine, not nearly as strong, but it's definitely got some stimulatory effects. And it re- in studies, it shows that it reduces the perception of pain, which is probably why it helps so, with opiate withdrawal. But I tell you what, dude, this is the second time using it in, in before my workout. And holy cow, I could So tell. how do you stumble across this like randomly? Like, do you have like some kind of wheel at home of supplements <laughs> yeah. that you just like, do, 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 do. Yeah. Are you on a bunch of forums? That's probably what you're a bunch of Well, there's a couple different ways. One way is to I like to go through popular supplement companies and look and see what ingredients they're throwing in there and then researching every ingredient to see what the deal is. So that's one way to do it. The other one is to go on to forums. Agmatine is in some pre-workout supplements. And so I wanted to to do a little bit more research and buy it by itself to add it to see if I notice a difference. And I did one gram, so a thousand milligrams, which I think is on the higher end of, of a dose. But I mean, I could tell, man. And I got, like I said, I got a great pump. And Anything I was negative you you foresee potentially? Yeah, because it's got this kind of neuromodulating effects and it's mildly stimulatory. I could see you building a tolerance and then have and then going off and feeling. But I don't know. This is only my second time using it. Now, how how consistent are you with your pre and post stuff? Like, I see you on your day of your your life story thing that you do. I see that. Some, and sometimes it's different. Sometimes I see you using four sigmatic stuff. Sometimes I see you using the bone broth protein. Sometimes I see you using Organifi. I mean, you seem very inconsistent I'm with what you're doing. I'm consistently taking something. <laughs> yeah, no, I, <laughs> I got that part, you know? Yeah. So do you, are you always kind of manipulating and playing? Or yeah. do you, oh, so I'm different. Yeah, so I'm I so rotate. Like consistent I rotate with whatever uh, I do. Cordyceps. Uh, I'll rotate that in. Uh, Organifi is red juice. If I'm dropping stimulants, I'll mm-hmm. do that. Um, ashwagandha, I'll rotate that in sometimes. So sometimes yes, sometimes not. Caffeine is pretty consistent unless I'm going off of stimulants. Beta alanine, I'll mix that in there sometimes. And then I'll throw in weird stuff. Like yeah, I but you're really that. mild with the caffeine though, right? Like you don't do very many milligrams. You're not like Justin and I. No, most I'll take in a day is about 300 milligrams. Real most. Oh, so that, you'll, get, you'll get that high even though. One, but that's all day. I yeah. won't do more than that. So I, I know you guys will typically have at least a couple doses of that, right, a day. 
Yeah, well, Justin's a couple doses of that. I'll normally have one big dose like that, which would be the rock star or a pre workout. So, so you'll have like I never do both. So if okay. I do, uh, if you see me drink a rock star in the morning, I'm not doing a pre workout later on. Mm -hmm. But if you don't see me drinking any caffeine in the morning time, you might see me do a, a pre workout. So mm -hmm. I'm probably, I don't think I peak over right now 400. So I'm not that much higher. No, okay. So that's, yeah. not, that's actually not bad. Because 220 is a rock star. Yeah. And if I, and I have my cup of coffee, maybe I have two cups of coffee sometimes so you're talking about yeah, 60 so you're probably to close 90 to there yeah so i oh, would that's say that's not bad at all what's yeah. nitro like 250 yeah no, well no not that high no no i don't think it's that it depends high, how big it? the nitro is oh yeah yeah, I mean, yeah like 20 ounces oh, oh 20 a, well, like you're oh day, right yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're up there bro. yeah bro you're up there for sure. <laughs> yeah, flying bro yeah, yeah maybe doug can look up i was thinking of that starbucks little, nitro yeah i was in a little six ounce eight ounce thing we drink you're talking about 20 ounces 20 ounces and then probably a rock star or like another coffee so justin probably yeah you're fucking like a thousand he probably fills his bath and coffee yeah. and he's yeah. in there. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. coffee yeah. grounds on his, I, yeah, I have on his like skin. face creamer coffee eye drops um, just, to, <laughs> just to add a little bit Everything. more i would love to see the caffeine content of nitro grande though doug if you can find it yeah yeah be interesting. I looked it up speaking I mean, i've done two of those a day before you have yeah. yeah i think it's closer to 300 for for something that big with really? the nitro oh yeah really? let me see 12 that's, ounces well, that's regular right. coffee it no looks that's like yeah oh, no, cold dude. that's cold cold brew bro it's got to be over 300 even as strong as it is because like. that 150 I mean, for 12 for, brew, just nitro yeah. yeah 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 there's an actual website that gives mm. you the caffeine uh, but right there, that's enough for me to tell. That's, yeah, it's, it's like 300. 150 for 12 ounces yeah, you're of right. cold brew. So, it's probably so if he goes 20 something, yeah, yeah. 20 ounces, that's a good close, guess. Close wow. Yeah, that's you ain't fucking good. around, bro. Speak, you, speaking, to the moon. Of, speaking of workouts and all that stuff, the Olympia happened recently. Did yeah. you follow the. See what the. Uh, follow is a strong word. No, I, I mean, did you I, see? I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I peeked in. Uh, yeah. I peeked in a little bit. Yeah, I was just, I like to see what's going on. You know what I, you know, okay, so you know what's really impressed me? So they have mm. now, they have, the, of course, the Mr. Olympia, which is like the biggest, most muscular, freaky, whatever looking guys, right? Yeah, big Rami again. Yeah, big, huge, like just crazy looking. And then they have the classic, which now it's like, and it's, I don't know, fifth year maybe? Yeah, Are they live broadcasting this? Yeah, yeah, you, it could, like you a, could live stream it. Oh, okay. Yeah, you could, live, like a you thing? could live stream okay. it. Yeah. I didn't watch it live, but I follow pages and they'll post like what's going on. Uh -huh. And the cla the Mr. Olympia, the Mr. Olympia Classic. C-Bum. Yeah, Chris Bumstead, right? Yeah. Now, that's supposed to be more of a classic kind of throwback, 80s, maybe 70s kind of look, maybe a little leaner than that. Great physique. Chris Bumstead, great physique. And you know what he does regularly? I know. And I this Dead is why lips. I'm such a fan of him, right? Because mm -hmm. we talk about this all the time, and there's still a lot of these knuckleheads that are in that space that don't deadlift and don't squat, he's not that guy. No. He's pulling serious weight. He squats, and he has an amazing physique. He is. He actually has probably my favorite physique. Same. I, I have, and that's not to knock or to say anything like the Big Rami, those guys, or Phil Heath, are fucking insane, right? But I never in my life would I ever even want to look that big, right? Yeah. So, He's got a physique like he's like that. That's like the, the peak of what I'd ever want to look like. Same, like, yeah. yeah. And in in what you he actually incorporated, if I'm not mistaken, deadlifts and squats later to bring up some of his body parts. Oh, I didn't know that. And it made a huge difference in his back. Oh, he would be great to talk to and, just because of that. Yes, and you know what's funny? There, you're right. There's there's knuckleheads that talk about how oh deadlifts don't really work the back or they really don't work other body. Dude, some of the most winningest bodybuilders of all time, like Ronnie Coleman, deadlifted regularly. And he had the most impress impressive looking back of all time. There's plenty of evidence that that exercise is phenomenal I, for developing. I, I, when I was competing, I completely stopped doing all other back exercises. And that's all I did, and it was the best back I ever brought to stage. Yeah. I don't give a shit what anybody says. They're so, they're stupid. They're, the, <laughs> they're stupid. If you got someone who's still arguing that uh, to people that oh deadlifting is not for your back, like yeah, it's it's not. You're right. It's not an isolation exercise. Mm -hmm. One hundred percent, it's not. Okay, so there's lots of isolation exercises that are out there for the back that it kicks the shit out of. So totally, if you get to a place where you're pulling four five hundred plus pounds i guarantee you have a sick back oh, show yeah. show me somebody who deadlifts 500 pounds and does not have a sick doesn't back. have at least a well-developed yes back. all of them yeah you, I know. You, just, you have to i know it's ridiculous yeah, but... you see that one guy's flare though 
stupid. Shut you know, up. You'd like this up. thing <laughs> where you. <laughs> and they hey, turned around as hey, awesome. Speaking don't try of, and side bust this conversation. I don't know what to right say, now. you guys. <laughs> We're trying to like chime in hey, here. What if Justin was like undercover? Like you, you went to his like his garage, <laughs> like his, his like his room. Posters. He had like posters of <laughs> these like teardrop quads. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, bro? I actually hey, didn't see much like, though, other than that. Yeah. I saw, How did our boy like, do? Arius. Arya placed eighth. Oh, he looked great. I, I love Arya. Oh, he and he guy. does look. He looks really good, dude. I just God, I can't. I mean, talk about he's on like his fifth appearance, I think, at Olympia. It's so time consuming. Oh, it would just... Uh, it's be, all day. Yeah, all the time. Not the training. That's like a couple hours a day. It's the diet. Oh, my. I remember when you were doing it. It was What a pain in the ass you were. Everything, yeah. You had to eat everything. is <laughs> perfect all the time. Yeah. It's ridiculous. You know what's funny? You, say, you just reminded me of that when we were talking about leaving right now, and you're like, we got to eat. I'm like, bro, you just ate right yeah. now. Oh, and I, no. I can it's only get so mad man. because I remember yeah. being that asshole where it's just like right. all every time anyone talks about doing anything, I'm like, whoa, wait, where right are we going? Right you're what mixing we it up. Wait a sec. Hold on. Let me, let me eat. I got to eat. No, you're mixing it up. I enjoy eating for the social <laughs> aspect. I do. I'm trying to be social. I'm gonna guys. hang out with you guys. We're trying to hit the road right now. You're like, we're not trying to sit down and be social for an hour, bro. Get out of here with You're that. You're always in a race. Yeah. We got to get there before yeah. the time. There's no time because like I'm driving. I don't want to sit in traffic. That's what, we'll that's talk fine. to you the whole time. Bro, tell me. Slurping. I bet neither one of you. I know you didn't watch this. Probably you not either. And I know you didn't either. What? The, uh, the the Tyson Fury. So oh. the Fury Wilder fight. Yeah, I didn't get to I watch. Saw, I, I wanted just saw the knockout. I wanted to watch. Yeah, I saw the end. Best boxing fight I've ever seen in my life. This hey, is what I heard, dude. Hey, by the way, in my and you life, you saw it. Yes. The whole thing. Hey, Sick. by the way, Tyson Fury, an example that you don't need to look aesthetic like a, like a crazy <laughs> physique to be a good fighter. You no. know what I mean? The guy looks like There's the so way, many greatest examples, of bro. That. He's, I mean, I, I think this solidified him as greatest all time, and a lot of people are gonna freak out about that because Muhammad Ali is right there uh, too, right? You can make the. That's yeah. how dominant he is. How been. big is he? Isn't he a huge guy though? Oh, bro, he's two hundred and eighty. Two, two, between 260 and 280, I can't remember what he Good what guys, So both these guys have like knockout power. So oh, he was bro. able to starch him. When in a, I, and I would like to see this stat too because I don't know what it, I, I don't think they talked about this, but maybe Doug could look this up. I don't know if you know what to search. Okay. Five knockdowns in a heavyweight fight that goes to the 11th round with a knockout in the oh, 11th wow, round. Dude. Just imagine that for a second. That doesn't happen. Two heavyweight guys with knockout power, and, and the, the both times dude, the counts the were seven to nine. Yeah, you know, if you get so, knocked down once, it's usually it. Oh my God, bro. It was so. Really? Such a good fight, dude. Wow. Now, where's he from? Yeah, I'm. Fury? Sad I missed yeah. that. Is he, he American? No. No. No, no, no. He's he um, from the UK or yes. uh yeah. Yes. I thought wow. he was part of like kind of the 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 carnival like uh Yeah, Gypsy King. That's what Gypsy they call him. Gypsy King, yeah. They call him really? Gypsy King. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you know yeah. that do you know that fighting is a big part of that culture? Dude, oh, yeah. he's they, there's bare knuckle documentaries fighting. about that. Yeah, bare knuckle, how they settle their differences. Still one of my favorite documentaries of all time. It's called Knuckle. You still have you even seen it? Have you? You showed me. I, I saw like clips. But can no, I, I just tell you that yet. you would fall in love with that? Of course, you, you would love it so much. Yeah, it's not even funny. Well, I'm so yeah. surprised you haven't seen it. Like like you you know you kind of sort of feel this attachment towards like Italian culture stuff. Like to me, that's like you know it, between Scottish and Irish kind of uh, folklore. I'm like all in. Yeah. Well, I just love I just love the the way that they. I mean, there's there's I love seeing how there's always honor and rules that are around this very violent yeah. way of handling, you know, situations. Yeah, they live by a code. Yes. You know, yeah, it's very which, interesting. Uh, I love me. that. Anyway, you guys didn't wish me a happy Columbus Day, so I feel a little offended. <laughs> <laughs> Is that some Columbus salami. Is that uh, why there wasn't traffic today? Can, hey. Oh, I was like, man, I thought for sure I was going to be late today. So, can I, so I know we're, this will probably air past Columbus Day, but I can I just tell you right now that Columbus Day has become the day where you could just talk shit about what, science? What has it been goes. hijacked? What? Right. Is that true? Is that true? Uh, I mean, okay. What does that have to do with I don't, Because I mean, every, people are like, we need to like not celebrate Columbus Day because he came here and killed all these people. What does that have to do with that? Italians? Because Colum Christopher Columbus, he's Italian. even though he was a Spaniard, well, wasn't he re representing? I guess he's representing. Oh, I didn't know yeah. that. You don't know Italians celeb celebrate Columbus Day in? in no, in I didn't. Coast, I didn't realize that he was Italian. Yeah, right. He's 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 Spanish. Uh, yeah, technically, I know but, technically. But here, okay, here's the deal. This makes yeah, me you guys are confusing me right now. So he's yeah. Spanish, but he's recognized by Italians as Italian, and so yeah, it's a big deal in, a, in Italy, Italy, and that also I, causes everyone to talk shit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Italians celebrate it big time on the East Coast, especially. Uh, You'll okay. see huge Columbus Day. Parade. Really? Oh yeah. Oh, interesting. Oh, yeah, it's a big deal. But you know, okay. So here's a part that annoys the shit out of me. And yes, I know what Columbus did. I know they came here. I know that there were people that lived here already, and they killed a lot of them. I know that. I'm not saying that's a good thing. But 
man, we if we judge every single historical anyone by that criteria, nobody, nobody would. Nobody passes the metrics. Nobody does. No. Nobody. In fact, indigenous we, people I don't, don't care. Don't I don't want to encourage any more cancel culture. I feel like that's just encouraging <clears throat> that. So, well, that's what they're already be, trying uh, to do. They're trying to cancel Columbus Day like crazy. I just, just look into the history of the Comanches. You know, that's pretty inconvenient. Did you yeah. see they're trying, the trying to cancel? Do you see they're cancel trying to cancel uh, John Gruden right now? Why? Over like an like an email sent like ten years ago had nothing to do. Like he wasn't. And I, they're trying to hold like the NFL. They're trying to hold the Raiders accountable to like hold him accountable. Really? Yeah, he was in some legal dispute or whatever, and he sent an email out, and it was I think it had some sort of a, a racist slur in there. Ten years old. Not he was not employed by the NFL at the time, and he was not with the Raiders. And yet, cancel culture is trying to get the Raiders and the NFL to hold him accountable for something like so that. So here's your okay, what the fuck? I know ridiculous. So here's the thing that you have to be careful with this this new this way that we cancel people, and you know, based off of things ten years ago, twenty years ago, five years ago, is if a camera followed you around and recorded you for your entire life, nobody nobody would would come out scot free. Yeah. Everybody would be fucked. And what this is why you have to be careful. It will be used against you. I promise. It will. And here's your here's some of your evidence that, on that's how it's happened to Hollywood people right totally. now. It's really it's, interesting to watch. It's so stupid. It's all good till it turns back on you. Oh yeah. Oh and and again, here's your evidence that it's that it's political this is all like politically driven. You don't see cancel culture directed in particular areas. For example, and I'm just going to pick uh the Democrats because uh, they're easy targets here. They were the ones that fought to maintain slavery. They're the party that founded the KKK. They were the ones that fought to to filibuster the civil rights movement. Yeah, but that's a why bad, aren't they ever why aren't they ever canceled? Yeah, but that's a bad example. You're, why? Because you're you're you you just took something that you're drawing a conclusion on a. a uh, no, no, a, you're right. I'm using the ridiculousness. Right? No, no, no. no but, but I mean, you're yeah, but you're also you're not using an individual. You're using a party. Parties aren't canceled. Their oh, people are being canceled. Oh, they'll cancel people just for affiliation for certain things. A There's no rules. They'll cancel a person for that, but you're saying why is the Democrat Party being canceled? I'm just saying it's never put in, know, in, in, in the right example. direction. It's a bad example. No, no, it's better they, to use another individual. No, they'll use entire groups. They'll say, oh, you belong to that that group over there. Did Again, you know? of that person, they will demonize that. You're talking about the individual. Mm -hmm. You're referring to a party being canceled. That's not going to happen. Well, that's I not, mean... That's it, not a good example. Why not? Look at, okay, how about this? Do you know who founded Planned Parenthood? The you, lady? Margaret Sanger. Yeah, you know yeah. what her history is? Yeah, I know that. that I, I, Eugenics, I know that Eugenics and all that shit? Yeah, yeah. yeah, but she's still lauded as this wonderful person. My point is that, not we should go back and cancel these people. My yeah, point is that. that this is a very strange criteria and uh, nobody will ever pass this. So you have to be very careful with it. I think it's super ridiculous. You're yeah. not going to go back in history and find anybody that's Well, perfect. it's Well, yeah, it's promoting the, the idea that there's like some people are pure. Yeah, because like, there's this purity out there, which again, this all like boils back down to a religious ideology. So if if you're gonna talk about what this looks like to me, uh, Mister Cult guy, okay, <laughs> this looks exactly like a cult that you know now they've found yeah. sort of their their talking points and their things that they want to decide that they don't like, mm. and they're gonna like impose their ideology out there, uh, you know, and it just it, it resembles exactly that same sort of blueprint uh, that you're never gonna be good enough, and they could find an angle in there to to expose that. Yeah. I think this. What's that? What was that study I was asking you about the other day that um, where the people stand up and everybody starts standing up? What's what's the name oh, of that study? Oh, I don't know. I know what you mean. Could though. you find that, Doug? Because I want to use that as an example yeah. for because that's I feel like that's what's going on here. I feel like what and whether the intentions were good or not with a lot of the things that we started to do, I think everybody's just falling suit because they don't want to be the person who they're doesn't fall in line. It's yeah, they're just group, falling in line because they don't think. want to be that person. I mean, you even see that now with all the uh, I have a lot of people that are friends of mine that have that work for like big companies and stuff. And everybody's like following suit with like the pronouns and everything yeah. on there. And I and I it's like I don't think it's because necessarily every one of those CEOs maybe, you know, believes that or thinks that's a smart they don't want to be well, fucked. It's so they're just like let's popular just, belief. Yeah, it's just because everybody's standing up, we better stand up. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because oh, I don't want to be I don't want to be the one company who doesn't do that, and then we have some employee come out and then get sued. Maybe. I feel like there's a lot of that going on with this this woke culture is that and even like I said, even if it was rooted and was some good idea, a good idea originally to like help minorities or any anything like that or protect people, I think what's happened is that it's just be turned into this thing where everyone just I'm going to stand up because I don't want to be the one person yeah. who's sitting it's down. Called it's called the called? waiting room experiment. That's the mm -hmm. name. Yeah, Isn't that a better name for. It? I thought there was like a, I thought it was like a. 
it's it's a social experiment on human behavior. They've done other ones too, where people are in an elevator and they're all facing like sideways, and someone walks in the elevator, and they're all actors. They walk and then they'll naturally face sideways like everybody else. I saw a great the great waiting room experiment one where like a bell would ding, yeah, I saw and it was one. so it was like a big waiting room, and there's like there's like twenty people in there, and there's like one or two actors that are in on it. And they start up, like the bell would ding before the doctor came out and asked for the next patient. And as soon as the bell would ding, they would just stand up. And then what would happen is like as 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 an, as new people came into they this room, following along. yeah, everybody. And then before you know it, like the third person, then the fourth person, then everybody's like standing up. Especially when it got to a place where like you know the new person walks in and like almost all of them are already standing. Like instantly, that person stands up. Where and it was neat to it's neat to watch the progression. The first time that they the, the one or two people stand up, people kind of look around like. Oh, are you supposed to do that? Yeah, and I then they, we are. yeah. And then after a while, when the majority is doing it, oh, the, it's the first it, right away. Well, they don't I even think my, twice. I saw my first example of of this, you know, in, in terms of my own sphere, uh, and I didn't really want to bring this up because it was like I'm like, oh, here we go. You know, why why did this uh, become uh, you know portrayed as like necessary, right? So I was at the homecoming for the game, and they're announcing the winners for the homecoming court. And uh, first of all, the announcer is just like, this is like not gender specific. And well, I'm like, what, what are you talking about? Not gender specific. We have a king and a queen. Like this is like a prince and a princess. Like this is already established, right? And so no, uh, now what they decided to do was to uh, basically they had the prince, princess, but now there was two kings that got awarded. So, and, and it's not even like, you know, they were pushing it, anything. It's just like they just decided uh, because of like this this popular thought that this needed to be, mm. you know, an example of like, hey, we're progressive or whatever the case. Meanwhile, I'm like, why don't you choose two queens? Because the guys don't give a shit about this to begin with. <laughs> like you just took away these poor girls' dreams of being queen. Why not have both the girls be queens, right? It's ridiculous. So what? Uh, what's so progressive about having two queens? Two kings instead of one king because like, you don't have. You, it's because then it doesn't matter what gender. Yeah. I guess. So now these poor girls, they they out these fancy dresses. Like they spent a lot more money, guaranteed on their clothes. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And they're just like, yep. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, we got two kings this year. They, they got to do a little dance together. It's a, I guess. It's, a, it's a male conspiracy theory. Like we're gonna win everything. Yeah, we're, <laughs> <laughs> we're just gonna take over, this. dude. You yeah. want you want to hear some more? This, so this is this is a, a left, but it's also ridiculousness. So there's this new. Have you guys heard of this cucumber cleanse that's going a little viral? That no. doctors are warning about. So it's a cucumber cleanse, and apparently it was going viral for a second. And people, doctor was like, "Don't don't do this. This is not good for you." So here's what here's what it is. You take a cucumber, you peel it. And you insert it into your vagina and twist it around. Whoa. Ooh. And you bring it in and out, and it cleanses the yoni. I don't know what the hell the yoni is. I guess that's some well, water. I love cucumber water. Yeah. Wow. They suggest that's... it resets your pH balance. <laughs> so apparently this is, a, this is a cleanse now. I feel like mm. it's like naming shit you want to do to make it sound like, you know what I mean? No, no, this is a cleanse. I like, this, I like right. to I like but to put a cucumber, like cucumber water and no, twist like it around. It. Yeah. yeah, this yeah. So we just wanted to make a video, yeah, and, and there's like, hey, this is a thing now. I, I feel like you could sell almost anything by making it sound good, and you'll have mm. people put things in their body just because you <laughs> just because you did. Yeah, well, exactly. Speaking of selling and good, that just reminded me of our sponsor, Public Goods. And Doug, I've been meaning to mm. ask you this. So I almost have I've converted almost all, all soaps, detergents uh, in my house to the public. The one thing I toothpaste, all that stuff. The one thing I haven't converted to yet is uh, a razor. Mm -hmm. And I thought I heard you say that you've done that. Are you using their razor yet? Yeah, I have for probably six months or so. Oh, okay. What do you think? I, I love them. Uh, I have two of them, one in my house and one in my travel bag. And so I, uh, I buy the, the blades. I think it's a buck for like five of them. Wow. And so it's very inexpensive. And so one of the things is uh, is making sure you're always changing out your blades. Otherwise, they get dull. Right. And at a dollar, it's you don't have any and second have thoughts Have you guys ever seen that. Doug with stubble? I was just thinking about no, that. No, that's no. why he's a good person to ask this. Like, never. Yeah, look yeah. at that. Always, like, baby soft clean. skin. Yeah. So are they're, they don't feel like the cheap, like, no, they don't big, at all. big ones? They they're feel super like... nice and sharp. Really? Yes, yeah. Oh, wow. What do you shave? Huh? What do you shave? My, my neck and oh. my line. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, obviously, uh, Vicky comes in and takes care of us on Mondays yes. or whatever. But yes. Shout out to her, God. by the way. She gets us looking good. What's the name of her web? Uh, her, Faded. Uh, Faded. That's yeah. in, uh, in San Jose. Yeah. East I Capital Expressway. East Capital Expressway. <laughs> the best place to get lined up or whatever. But, yeah. Um, no, I still, I still, after about like three or four days, I'll start to get the stubble. And then I'll, I'll still, I'll line it up. When you were doing, when you were competing, who shaved you? Did Katrina shave wow. your body? Or did I you do shave a, myself. Even mm. your, how'd you get I to the back part? I would not make my, I don't have a lot of hair on my back part. Really? Mm -mm. You don't have to oh, shave then again, your ass. It's because you got, you got the big shorts. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. You don't have like a lot. I mean. So you would have shaved legs and then a little hairy on butt? Uh, I don't know. I have I I did never get a, like a real good snapshot. It's of, like a reverse. Gorilla so how head. do they decide? Because there's like the dudes in thongs. Like what's that category? There, nobody competes in a thong. Not thongs. You mean like a bikini? A bikini? <laughs> bikini briefs? You mean what the hell? Yeah, okay. the <laughs> Wait, what are you watching? You're my straight yes, yes. glutes you don't, guy. You yeah. don't find Mr. Olympia in Pornhub, Justin. That's I, not uh, where I've you been find looking at the, the streaming websites. service for that. <laughs> it's uh, bodybuilding. Are you flexing. talking about the bikini yeah. briefs? Are you talking about that? Yeah, I don't know. It's, that's it's, all. That's everybody but men's physique. Men's physique are the only ones who wear shorts. Everybody else is in bikini briefs. Okay. So yeah. yeah, classic and, and your traditional bodybuilders now, now, are all in bikini he briefs. Is, yeah. He is right, though, that the trend started where they would give themselves a wedgie. It's just, oh, yeah. It's like, to show it inevitably it just sucks into a wedgie. So they, they did that, and it got popular with Sal's guy. He talks Sal talks about him all the time. Was like the Richard first Spari. Yeah, was the first guy to ever have like striated yeah, glutes which, seen, bumpy which means if you get your if you get so i mean it's like one of the fattest parts of your body right you're right so if you get your especially glutes justin. lean hey. what you say especially justin clap, yeah. clap. <laughs> but that's ph yeah if you start if you show of. striation in your glutes you are lean as fuck so that's it got popular once bodybuilders and and competitors got to the level that they could get so lean before that they couldn't get that lean yeah so they're not even really judging on that it's just like br uh, brownie points well, well it's, you know, the i mean they kind of are right it's kind of like they look, do now it's like a way of showing, like, look how lean I am. Oh, okay, yeah. right. Doug, can you can you pull up Ro put Ronnie Coleman striated glutes? Have you guys? <laughs> yeah, is, no, my no. search is getting yeah. corrupted no, no. here. You, you, okay, I I have, have like you guys ever FBI seen? Show up one day. Have you ever seen this fucker flex in, when he was in his prime and he does the striated glute pose? Can't, it can't it say looks I have, so. freaky. <laughs> look, Doug just pulled it up. Yeah, you got to see Sweet. this up on the screen. <laughs> right. it's, uh, yeah. I already see it firsthand on his. Uh, no, no, no. Screen, it's so. uh, it's it's crazy. Look, it's look very, at that, bro. Wow. Look at those. What the hell is things. that? Powerful, bro. That's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. He could he could He's shoot he could shit a bullet out of that thing. Yeah. Lovely. Wow. That's insane wow. looking. It is. I mean, it, it is a muscle, right? Yeah, but uh, insane. Yeah, I, he now, was so he much more. Diamonds. He's so much more impressive it's, it's, than anybody right yeah. now. I feel like. Oh yeah, there's his weight. Look at his waist compared to his his, his like how w wide his back is. Yeah, his he, waist looks crazy. Yeah, small. that's a ridiculous amount uh, of muscle. Deadlifting like 800 pounds heading into doesn't doesn't even it's make getting sense. hot here. <laughs> yeah. <So, laughs> what else are we gonna talk about, you guys? Yeah. <laughs> I don't, yeah, you know what though? Um, I don't know where they would. That that sport is so extreme. I don't know where they would where they would go. There's a yeah. lot of, have you, there's a lot of deaths that have been happening in that sport. Recently. Yeah. Someone else just passed away. Actually, yeah, the day. They think it's from diuretic use. So a lot of people don't know this, but mm, yeah, so one of the darker sides of, besides all the other drug use that, you know, including anabolic steroids and growth hormone stuff is they'll use diuretics before competition. And diuretics are like, they're used for medical conditions that suck yeah. the water out of your body. And that can cause your heart to fail or your muscles to seize up. There was one competition in the 90s. Paul Dillett, I think, was on stage, was posing, and his body froze up. They had to carry him off stage in the back. And so like, calorie depleted and everything on, like everything on top of that and then like taking the water out. Yeah. Like, so dangerous. Well, remember, Adam would get sick before yeah. every show. Because Not every, but a lot of shows. That, well, that's what you said, right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Because okay. your immune system was oh, so... Oh, yeah, no, I was, I was super... I, it would, I mean, you figure, right? You're depleted for that long, long of a period of time, for weeks and weeks and weeks. And, and if it would come around the winter... It would be when wintertime. If I was competing and it was around wintertime, it was like almost guaranteed in prep, I would I would get sick. Yeah, to this day, whenever we get people who call, who ask a question, if they think, oh, should I compete? It's almost an, an always a no for me. Such a Such a not good for you... Yeah. sport to compete in yeah i think i was really lucky that i i did it at the point in my career that i did i don't think that it would have been good for me if i would have done tried to do something like that in my 20s i don't think i was in the right headspace to to do something like that yeah mm. but speaking of things that um sal watches late at night um oh great wow. did you guys What's see this? that uh yeah, this is, you know you watch ronnie coleman's glutes at yeah. night time <laughs> yeah. uh, do you guys see the vr strip clubs 
Uh, oh, wait no. a minute. Yes, sir. I, wait, who's, did you send well, a clip or someone send a clip in our group text? Uh, I might have. I don't know. Are, maybe, are these like video game type yes, people or is, it, or is it like real people? Yeah, it's like it's like video game avatars as of right now. I yeah, mean, but it's so I saw how, how much one. longer. Have you seen yeah. some video games where it looks like people? So it's yeah. not going to be fun. I saw, okay, I saw a clip. I don't know if you sent it or tagged me on it or someone did. But they still move weird. Bro, yeah, it <laughs> was this. What is this? It was this overweight 30 year old dude that looks like he lives at his mom's basement. Mm -hmm. And he, his avatar is this hot elf chick. <laughs> That, that does so that's what VR concerns stream. me about yeah, all this dude. stuff, dude. Yeah, and he's, right? and he's doing VR stream. Like, he's just catfishing every stripping. dude like he can. Is yeah. that the one you saw? Uh, I think so. Yeah, I think I saw. I actually, after I saw it, I got interested because I want to see how much it was. So I started <laughs> to dig around. I couldn't actually get to the bottom of it. So maybe Doug, you could help me find that. But I was curious to like how expensive it was or how popular these things are. But they're moving in that direction. We're so getting it's, closer it's, to the where you don't have to leave your room. That's, yeah, I'm telling well, you, it's like that's what's happening, especially with the what's gone on with COVID and the lockdowns and don't go see people and stuff like that. We're already encouraging people to do that. And then the technology yeah. comes out to go, oh, you know, it ain't so bad. Yeah. Here. You know, you I can, can do this all day long. At home. Dude, dude I, I watched three oh, oh, there you go. VR paradise. See, what? That looks more real right there. Oh, yeah. You know what? And the tech is only going to get better. So they're going to look more How and more much? Real. Why does it say you're already a hey, subscriber? Hey, 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 I saw boobies. Why does it say you're a subscriber? Did you really just say that like that? It's a, hey, it says, welcome back, Doug. How many <laughs> times have you been on there, Doug? Liar. You got yeah. credits. <laughs> Doug. Wow. Yeah. You can uh, actually choose what you like to look at. Wow. Right look at that. It has like a sliding scale for breast size and bottom size. Spend a lot color. of tokens in there, I see. Hey, what you dress her. On the one hand, we're trying to be like super progressive. On the other hand, it's like the, this is as about as... Like you can objectify bodies as much what as possible. It, what does it right? say by now, Doug, in the corner? What's that say? I can't read it from here. Uh, yes, by now. I know above that. I read by now. What does it say above that? Is what like what's not. the price? Oh, I'm looking for that right now. Oh, it's nine. Well, it's in euros. Interestingly, oh. uh, 1999 euros for what? Like, I don't life? know. Probably a month. Oh my god! Subscription. Look at the VR. Oh, and I guess when you move, <laughs> oh, you your, get hands. Well, because you have VR goggles on. Yeah. So you move around, and then you could talk to them wow oh, no. this oh. is gonna get weird no dude. hands hey oh, wow either. this is uh, interesting for this sure. is intense <laughs> i'm not gonna lie but I notice i don't want to experience this just because i want to see like does it is it like i'm not a big strip club guy as it is so i, I don't mean, know. just I, to evaluate yeah you know, no yeah. really doug really. change the change yeah, screen yeah. Doug. This, i mean you can leave this doug if you want it's, <laughs> it's heating this, up in here i feel weird watching this cartoon Oh oh okay, God. but here's the thing, though. Look how... Holy, holy. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. You're getting... Look, yeah. Wow. Okay, we're, we're only going to be able to <laughs> show mean, some of this on This is only going to get more real looking. I, I mean, know. we're not far from it looking less, you know, virtual reality well, We looking. just made Andrew super uncomfortable. Right? Yeah. Oh, man, he's, look at yeah, this. Was, <laughs> he's like... Hey, he's like, oh, like I just saw him screenshot the website. He's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's I need that, to leave. crazy though, right? That is crazy. Though. I didn't know it was already. I didn't know it was like that already. I mean, and so the strippers are people too behind, right? So that's the article that we, I saw that I probably share with you because you're referring to what I saw too. So that is like a website where you go in, you pay a monthly oh. membership, and then you have access to the and you can build. Do you think these they were wearing those those suits with the. Uh, for the green screen where they had like the different tracking sensors on them to do all those sexy moves. Yeah. Uh, probably. Well, what I saw in the to commercial, it, you'd think so. Yeah. To build it. I'm what sure. I saw in the commercial was there was a dude and he was the stripper. No. And he had, yes. And like I said, he was, and he built the seven. avatar. Yeah. So there, that's more like an interactive one, which wow. I believe it'll go to that. Right. I think you'll see yeah. eventually what will make, cause right now, you know, you're going into like a video game there. What will make it probably more of a turn on for somebody mm. is if you're interacting with another real person. That's also in the virtual world, right? I feel that, like the virtual world's more normal than the real world. What happened? <laughs> what? Is that, is that what, what's happening? Hey, speaking of crazy shit, I found this series on Netflix that I think only Justin would appreciate. Okay. Have you seen it? It's Oats Studios and they're short films. So like 20 minute or 10 minute films, but all of them are sci-fi post-apocalyptic oh, based okay. type right, films. You're scratching my itch. Bro. 
the first episode, Sigourney Weaver is in it, and it's like a post-apocalyptic world with these aliens that, if, oh my God, dude, it's intense. Huh. It's really fun. It's really, really interesting. I, cool. I'm surprised you haven't seen it. Well, yeah. I mean, I've, I'm still getting in that foundation uh, series. Oh, yeah. How's that I going? I love it, dude. It's so good. Yeah, I could totally see how, uh, again, in, in Star Wars did take a lot because this was a series before Star Wars existed. So to your point of last time we brought it up with the Empire and all that, there's going to be a lot more verbiage and, and, and similarities uh, you know that they extracted from it, but I just the the whole concept to me it's like really trippy and it's out there and it's like it's a fresh new story that like is original. You know that I think you just don't see that a lot. People putting a lot of money into that. What episode are you on? I'm on episode four, I think. Current. Would then, you go back and rewatch the first four and then go forward? Totally. Okay, cool. Because we're all going to be going up together. Oh, I'd be down to, to watch that. I'm totally down too. to do that. Because yeah, I was, I'm only on one. two, and I it's actually. It's a little. I mean, it, again, it's heady, and it's a little bit. It's not like action pack, you know. It, no, it, it's I don't like care. it's building yeah, a storyline. You can tell. Yeah, it's oh, that's a good one for us to give watch. It okay. some yeah, time. Time. I mean, I, I'm probably the least into that, and I'd watch that with you guys. I started clickbait with Jessica, so we watched. Oh, you did. How far did you get? We're on episode four, I think, or three or four. Really good. Yeah. And I think it's it accurately depicting the social media tech. Yeah. Thing. Doug and I talked about this afterwards because he, he benched it right after I sent him over to it. And it's, I, I would give it C minus acting, but A plus story. Okay. Mm. So like, I think the acting is kind of weak, but the story is so good that it, it kept me coming back and I watched the whole thing. And I think it's great. I think mm. the whole thing is great, but, uh, yeah, the acting was just kind of like eh, a little mm. cheesy or whatever. Well, I, I want, I do want to show you guys because they're short episodes. I do want to show you guys when we go hang out uh, to work or whatever at night. Let's. I do want to show you some of the Oats Studios. Oh, shit. I'm in, dude. Yeah, it's, and it's it's, it's really it's like the first one was really good. Dude. I have another good recommendation for the audience as far as I tell you what, and I, I feel like I'm eating crow here because I was the one kind of shitting on Netflix as far as coming out with mm. really good content, especially yeah, related been to some. Dude, have you late. seen Bad Sport yet? I haven't seen that. I, I just saw the preview for that though. Another so and it's all these um like they're like, like sports drug, uh, stories that you you a lot of people don't know about. Like I mean I'm I'm into sports and some of them like I, I'm like oh I kind of vaguely remember that they're like in the late 80s, mm -hmm. early 90s. These like crazy stories that happened in sports, hmm. very similar, like I said to the the, and it's a di this is different. The other one was untold stories this on is Netflix. Another kind of thirty for thirty vibe. Very vibe, yeah. Got it's got that same kind of vibe where it's like these great document, short documentaries, one hours, hmm. one hour uh, documentaries on a specific you know subject or topic or sport yeah. uh, of something that a story that you didn't know and some great stories that oh. I had no idea about that were just and it's shot really really well mm -hmm. well I got to give you guys a bit of an update with the whole football uh, situation uh, so we have been uh, it's been frustrating the last like two three games like we've actually lost by like one touchdown or like a field goal oh, oh it's just it's just stung the, the, the third one I've never like lost three in a row so to me that one really stung uh, but, uh, turns out, okay. So we were down to like the, the last minute and this, this caused some controversy amongst the coaches, even of like how to strategically handle this kind of situation where basically they had the ball and, uh, they got up to like our 40 yard line. And so they have like, you know, 60 yards to go and, Apparently they have a really strong kicker, which like I kind of saw a little bit of um, one of my other friends. He's a coach. He saw he had a really good leg on him. The other coaches didn't really see that you know that he had a great leg. So their thought and philosophy behind it was to run the clock out and let them you know go for the long kick. Uh, then we would get into like overtime, mm. right? And so that was sort of like uh, we're like timeout, timeout, timeout. You know, trying to save time so that way we get the ball back even if they do right. score so we have one more chance right right uh so it's like the whole play to win or play not to lose uh mm -hmm. type of uh strategies going on there but so what happened was they kick like it's like a 46 yard field goal right it's a really long field goal especially for this kids. is high school yeah. right kicks it flies it's going in the air for days score wow field goal wins a game we review this later it did not go in. What? what? You have the you have the refs that are sitting right underneath exactly. it. Exactly. What the fuck? Right? Wow. So and I'll have Andrew post right here. There's a picture, right? So the ball's on its way. You could see it literally. Now you can't see it because it's behind the goalpost. 
It okay. wouldn't be behind the goalpost. It'd be in front of the goalpost. Wow. Now does does okay does does high school high school have I imagine probably less refs than NFL, but in the NFL when they kick a field goal you have a there's ref. Two, like, there's two sides. refs. You have yeah. two refs. Then there's they're standing right underneath the uh -huh. goalpost, so they can it has to basically go over their head. Or yeah. Else it would so. So they, how did that even happen? Yeah. Right? There was, you guys had refs there like that? Honestly, it's it's baffling to me because like even we saw it and it was such a long kick. I think we were all just amazed that he kicked it so far. And I think that just took over everybody's uh, like, whoa. And then, oh, like right when we saw they throw their hands up, we didn't even think that, you know, it, it missed. That's the lizard people. <laughs> it's a conspiracy, <laughs> dude. I knew it. It's, it's, yeah. yeah so, oh, so that was even worse. I was like, oh, what a day, dude. You know, now I find out that. They, they so didn't what's make the it? record at right now? Because we, where are you at right now? What are you guys? Uh, no, so we have two wins. Oh, um, good. Yeah. So, yeah. So we're two and three, but. You know, the first two games were scratched because of we couldn't um, field a team because of COVID restrictions. Like, dude, this team has gone through the ringer. I feel feel for them a lot because we've just had like, you know, other kid like left us and went to our rival team. Yeah. We've had other kids just drop out. Like we're literally down to no alternates and everybody runs like every play and we're just like piecing it together and we're still fighting. And these kids like still these games, we should have won, you know, that's what's so frustrating. Like right. they have the heart. It's just, you know, like it's so limiting, like what we can do right now. Well, it's not, but it sounds like they're all, getting benefit from it they're improving and working oh, together yeah. that's good yeah yeah i mean everybody's still like about it it's just like you know it's 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 hard you know it stings now when these games are going on and you're watching i know you personally i know you're normally a very calm measured individual but i know that what is under the surface is a raging inferno yeah are you how are you at the games are you like the coach that's like bah! or are you very like chill and like yeah I, I would guess you would you would call me the the coach that's sort of um almost ready to choke somebody out okay yeah, <laughs> so, <laughs> so. i'm very into it like I, it it ramps way up for me and i just can't help it because it for me it's just the association uh yeah. i want to get out there i want to cause a ruckus and like i just you know uh it's hard for me to be on the sidelines yeah we still haven't come to a game so i think we need to do that no no i want to go no, for the sure. last game like i said it's the rival game like we'll get you guys out we'll, right. we'll make we'll make whatever you know push uh that we have left and that's we'll, all gonna pour we'll out the field there. at the game let's yeah. go brandon let's, let's go brandon <laughs> That's the guy. You start it, dude. <laughs> you did. Hey, so I would love to start that. Dude. Bro, I died. Well, I dare I you, dude. Now, have you guys actually watched the original clip? Yes, of that? dude. It's oh, the best thing I've ever seen in my life. God, Where it's Joe freaking Brandon. a lot. I don't care what side you're on. You should be able to laugh at that. If not, but you're, you're yeah. going to laugh. As you can hear the chants from the, the crowd. Let's go, Brandon. Same, dude. Just you know, a reporter, like, just totally. Dude, yeah. You know what the irony of that is? What they're it's really only going to make it spread. Oh, yeah. yeah that's why oh, it's, it's so, so great. She's trying to brush it under the rug like yeah. it wasn't that. And it's just like, oh, wait. <laughs> now you just made like a viral sensation because of that. <laughs> so great. Yeah. Well, since you're going to talk about controversy, one of you guys had uh, in your notes, and I want to bring it up, um, that they passed a law no, for uh, toys, do. gender. Uh, what is, is that this true? Is, uh, who use some gem instead of focusing? Oh, on this is our this is our place. This is California, is California. preventing yeah. us from getting forest fires and you know like attacking. And the I saw Lego. Lego and, like, responded to it and did some stuff already. He passed yeah. a law that said every store that sells toys has to have an aisle with gender neutral toys in it, which does nothing. Yeah. Which it does nothing. kids want like naturally gravitate towards what they want. It just does them nothing. What, like, so, what okay, doesn't do anything. Point. Okay, so, so yeah, let me get this correct. So like, like Target now will have to have an aisle that mm -hmm. is dedicated to to gender neutral children, gender neutral toys. So well, that would be for gender another neutral great children, move for right? small business to now have to like you know so, account for that. So what's right? it going to have in there? It's so funny it, we, in the in the uh, pursuit of being inclusive. I feel like we're we are. Is, is, is segregating us even more. It, okay, 100%. so it requires so stupid. It requires a gender neutral toy section. Now, here's why this is annoying because it's a lot of like, look at what we're doing, and it's done. It's really it's not a, it's helping. All optics. There's so many things you could do, and this is what you do. It's to, to to signal to everybody how much you care. It's not doing anything. Also, by the way, I'm going to piss some people off. Studies have been done on this, not just in humans, but in primates as well, and. 
the to- toys, people think that we give toys to our kids to make them be a particular way. Yeah. Oh, they've already done studies that show. I'm, sh- I'm sure there's some of that, but most of it is driven from what kids want to be in. So, And right. they show that l- boys tend to like things and girls tend to like people or you know like dolls and stuff like that and that's just an evolutionary fact if you talk to evolutionary I guess I'm just, I, I guess scientists they'll explain that i guess i'm still confused here what what does the what does the gender neutral toy aisle look like that's different than the other aisle rocks <laughs> so, I have no it's idea. A pet dude. Rock, pet I don't know. That's a good question. Maybe like gray, puzzles, puzzles and, cr- and crayons. Gray yeah. nothingness. So that's you know? that's where I'm confused Robots. right now. So are they going to take toys that are like, okay, this toy doesn't have a sex because it's not a doll or yeah. a transformer thing I'm or whatever? Sure Ken is already there. Yeah. No, no, Ken's <laughs> fucked. He's, he doesn't have anything. He's supposed yeah. to be a he's supposed to be a guy, as far as I know. He but so. He, so the so maybe there's going to be an aisle that will be dedicated to like okay, so here's one of the balls reasons. a bat a puzzle yes. so here's here's why it's not going to do anything rings. because Target is going to literally just take the toys that they already have in there and yeah. put it in one aisle yeah that's why that's what I'm trying to get at right now this yeah. this makes no sense because if you're the governor There's now no you get thing. to say I made a law that required gender neutral aisle and yep. all the stores and it looks good Bravo, but it does nothing dude. I just want to know it who's can't up there be that ridiculous yeah. there's got to be like some dude, desired dude. outcome Outcome Dude, work, that's dude. different. The desired outcome is you you don't want to encourage you always want to let your kids' creativity drive what they play with, and you don't want to impose upon them what you think they should be playing. Yeah, with. but what's and okay. I get I get that. I get that. But what does this do for that? So let's Nothing. pretend I'm one of those woke parents who's like, I've got my little two year old, and I'm like, I'm not gonna tell him if he's a boy or girl yet. I'm gonna dress him in white all the time, and then we're walking down the aisle and we're gonna go get a toy, and I'm like you know, uh, my my child that doesn't identify with anything else, I'm going to stop him from going to the boy or girl aisle. We're yeah. going to come over here to the, the non-gender aisle and shop, so I don't want to... I don't, I don't want to pollute his, her him or her mind No one's going to do that. Right. No one's gonna I don't do get it. No one's going to do that. You're right. You don't get it because it makes no sense. Again, the, the gender-neutral toys exist, and what they're going to do is put them in one aisle. It's not going to solve... It's not doing anything. And there's still going to be trucks, and there's still going to be dolls, and there's still yeah. going to be... Because there's a market demand yeah. for this Connect kind of stuff. Connect four. Yeah, that's that's all I got. Yeah. <laughs> Very so, Yeah, so yeah. it's not going to do anything. But yes, yeah. this is a law. <laughs> they just passed this law. Can you well, believe that? So I, I these, assume- guys, these legislators... Listen, they're literally sitting around in, in California, which is bleeding <clears throat> residents, has a homeless, homeless problem that's grown, I think, 70% in the last four or five years. Crime has gone up... Uh, uh, Tremendously, especially yeah. petty crime, because we've we've taken. There's no small businesses left. Yeah, they, and, they and stuffed they're like everybody out, and they're like, all right, guys, you know, I know we're getting paid by the minute, you know, by tax dollars. So here's we're gonna solve something right now. We're gonna pass a law. Yeah, makes all these stores have to put all these particular toys in one aisle. Yeah. Plus, like, you can hey. just steal the toys anyway, as long as it's under like sixty dollars. You don't get a criminal fine. Have you so. seen the videos of that? You're of what? Okay, because a, a lot of cities like San Francisco pass law. It used, so if you steal, it's a it's yeah, usually it's a under, big deal. If it's nine under nine hundred dollars, they don't do anything. Something like that. That's so the thing when are I walking in and they're literally just oh in, yeah no this is a part, when shit. I tell friends that are like out of state and family that are out of state when I tell them like no this is like yeah. a real thing that yeah. happens in San Francisco where literally someone will walk in there there'll be security in there and everything they don't waste mm-hmm. their time and they walk over with a trash bag and they. They empty just, just, under nine hundred dollars <laughs> worth of supplies, bathroom supplies, things like that, and then they w- out their black trash bag. And they walk right yeah, out, and they the, don't get stopped the because if they get stopped, the cop pick the police officers pick them up, bring them in, and let them out that same yeah. day. Yeah. And so it's a waste of police time. It's a waste of. I have two guard. aqua persons, please. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So my brother lived in San Francisco. Filmed. There was three got three people that walked into a store, filled up bags with deodorant and and like you know bathroom supplies, filled it up. And then when he left the store, he walked. He had to walk home, right? So he walked around, around the, the corner, corner selling it. I bet they had it on the floor <laughs> laid out selling them. Can you believe this shit? Of yeah. course I believe it. Because no, if, that's, if I, mean, I was homeless, that's exactly what I would do. Like easily you know, take advantage should, of that. What they should do yeah. is they should pass a law making an aisle of free stuff. Here you go. Here's all the yeah, stuff. Here's you the free steal. stuff. <laughs> you know, we know you're gonna do it anyway. Here you weird go. Times, yeah. Weird times. Weird times. So we right got now. that going for us. Hey, real quick, I hope you're enjoying the show. Look, we are a fitness and health podcast, but we also know that there's value in improving your quality of life, which means sometimes doing things that maybe don't look so healthy on the surface. For example, drinking alcohol. Drinking alcohol can be a very healthy practice when you do it with friends for the right reasons. The problem is the day after you tend to feel like crap. Well, there's a company called Z-Biotics that makes a genetically modified 
Back, this is the first only in the world genetically modified probiotic drink. So it's literally designed, these bacteria are designed to produce things that break down the negative byproducts of alcohol consumption. So here's how it works. You drink a Z-Biotics, then you drink alcohol like you normally would, and the next day you feel way better. And ladies and gentlemen, we've tried this before, and it really does work. So pretty interesting stuff. Go check it out. Head over to zbiotics.com. That's Z-B-I-O-T-I-C-S.com forward slash mind pump. And then use the code mind pump 10. That's mind pump one zero for 10% off your first order. All right, here's the rest of the show. Our first caller is Anna from Maryland. Hey, Anna, how can we help you? Hi, guys. Um, well, first off, I just wanted to say, as everyone says, um, you guys do great work. Um, thank you for uh, you know putting this podcast out. So, yeah, I want to start with that. Um, I have a question about um, one of my clients. So I am a trainer. Actually, um, uh, this month marks my one year. So I'm a newer trainer. And I um, have a client that I've been working with since the end of May that um, is a bariatric patient. So about um, a little over a year ago, she got the surgery. Um, I had put her on a strength focused, um, pretty like linear progression, anabolic esque type, um, workout program. And she was doing really well. Um, her strength is doing well, like she's going up, uh, in weight and getting stronger every session, but we did her body fat ooh, about, um, the beginning of August and she actually had went up body fat. So my question is, how do you increase a bariatric patient's metabolism? Um, I think I also put in my question, like, would things like aminos and other supplements in her case be more important? Um, so if you could just speak on that. Yeah, really, really good question. So uh, first thing I want to ask you, though, is how did you do the body fat test? Because you said she got stronger, but her body fat percentage went up. And I know body fat percentage tests can are notoriously challenging to do when people have a lot of body fat, the, the, the larger they are and the leaner they are. So when you get on the extreme ends, the more inaccurate they are and the harder they are to track. Yeah, so. but don't you think that's, I mean, that's almost obvious that's what's going to happen. If she had the surgery in the mm -hmm. last year or even two years, she's losing weight like crazy because her calorie intakes, she's losing just total weight well, too I, fast. Maybe. So I don't think it would but be. But she got stronger. That's why I want to ask, like, how did you do the body fat test the first the first time and then and then each subsequent time? Yeah. So, um, I do work at a studio. I moved from a big box gym that did like in bodies with, um, bioelectrical impedance to somewhere that does skin calipers. So I was curious about getting her on, um, like an in body machine, but we did calipers. So. Okay. And you did yeah. calipers the whole time. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And how does, much did her body fat percentage go up? Uh, by like 4%. Okay. So that's within the, the realm of error. But again, what Adam's saying could be true. I mean, losing that much weight, the only thing is that her strength went up. And honestly, when you're dealing with that much weight loss, that's really the main thing that I'm looking at is, are you getting stronger? As far as the supplements are concerned, of course, you want to work with her doctor because they do have pretty specific nu nu nutritional requirements. She's probably already on multivitamins and other supplements. But can amino acids and protein powders help this person? In my experience, yes, very much so. Easily digestible protein. That's easy to consume and convenient can, can help when somebody's stomach is so small or they can't consume as much at one sitting. Digestive enzymes can help. So can amino acids. But I would work with the doctor to make sure that this is all uh, okay. How many calories is she currently on right now and how long ago was the surgery? So I have her tracking, but she's not very good at keeping it. Uh, she seems to be around 1200, sometimes can get to like 1250. And then, um, so pretty low. And how I, how long how long of. how long has she been on the, uh, from the surgery? Uh, away from the surgery, removed from it. Yeah. How long ago was the surgery? A little over a year. Okay. Well, there you go. I mean, uh, th that's mm -hmm. Sal. If someone goes down, if someone was eating three thousand plus calories a day, they do the surgery. They're eating twelve hundred. You can get stronger, especially since you've been training with them. It's very normal for her to get stronger. But she's losing weight at such a rapid rate that the ratio of muscle to uh, fat is higher. So that's what makes the body fat percentage go up, which is extremely uh, common with this situation. So that's yeah. not 
Uh, I wouldn't be too worried about that. That's how I'd explain that to her is that, listen, we have dramatically cut your calories. And even though we're, we are building some muscle and we are heading in the right direction, you're losing so fast that it's very normal for you to also lose muscle because we're not no we're no longer feeding it uh, enough calories to sustain it on your body. So that's all normal. Yeah, I, I would be entirely focused on performance. I, I've worked with a few bariatric patients and I mean, essentially that surgery forces you to lose weight. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to supplements, I always would work with the doctor because you're not dealing with a normal digestive system anymore. So there are special requirements, but I would focus entirely on performance, make the whole thing about performance. I wouldn't look at the scale. I wouldn't work. First off, she's going to look at the scale anyway. She's probably already getting tracked by the doctor. She's very aware of how much weight she's losing or not losing because that's why she did the procedure. I would focus entirely on performance, stamina, strength, mobility, and endurance, and move in that direction because in my experience, it's already so body focused yeah. that if I keep placing focus on body, it can oftentimes make it a very stressful situation. And, and when you're dealing with somebody who medi medicated themselves with food for so long, what you don't want to do is make an experience uh, something that may not be as enjoyable. And I found that just focusing entirely on performance tends to do a better job uh, with these with this particular population of people I mean I, I would also I wouldn't I would personally whether that's you you don't need to probably involve her as much I guess but I would definitely make an effort to keep her protein intake pretty because she's gonna be so low calorie that making sure she's on a higher protein diet will be muscle sparing for her even though to Sal's point, that shouldn't be the focus. We we don't need to worry too much about that. The it's inevitable that if you reduce your calories at that rate from the size that she probably was at before, we're gonna lose muscle too. But to to minimize how much muscle we lose, I would I'd be focused for you as a coach at keeping her protein intake. Mm -hmm. You know, but uh, you you could tie that to performance, right? Mm -hmm. So rather than saying eat more protein so you don't lose muscle or so you get right. leaner, so be stronger. Exactly. We yeah. want to look at strength. We want to see how strong you can get. I want to see your performance, and I think we need to increase your protein intake in order to do that. And then shakes can be very valuable for people in this particular situation because of the procedure that they had. It's harder to digest food. They don't have as much capability to have as much food at one time. And liquid shakes can also oftentimes be something that that helps quite a bit. And here's what's happening is you, we're, we're so low calorie that fat and muscle is just coming off the body at such a, a fast rate. At what point that will start to, especially if you're strength training, if you're strength training or getting adequate protein, at one point, the, the probably the fat loss will continue and then she'll start to kind of hold uh, her, her muscle mass. And that, and really that's kind of, uh, your indicator of like, you guys are really on the right path is that, yeah. you know, she started to level off on, yeah. uh, on the body fat percentage, but well, I would, Oh, she that's, has. She has. But, but, okay. Well, and that's to update since, uh, I wrote in the question for, um, a little under a month now, she's been at the same weight. Like oh. she comes in, she's like, "That's great." It has not budged. This is so funny. Yeah. So I'm, I'm hopeful that like the next time we do the body fat percentage, there might be a change in that composition. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. And again, it's a different client I've ever worked with. Um, I told her to try to up her cal. See, I, I wasn't sure about upping it with protein or carbs because I know protein is very satiating, and for her. It's really hard. Um, she's already had, I think it's called dumping syndrome, mm -hmm. um, which uh, bariatric patients can get. Um, and it's just they get really full and they feel sick kind of thing. So I actually told her about like 200 calorie surplus with carbs. You're saying protein instead, most likely. Yeah, or, yeah. proteins, if fats. I mean, you, you know, you want to get that. But I mean, if she feels better with some carbs, that's fine. Small meals throughout the day. This is where the benefit of that is. You know, someone like this would be doing like, seven or eight, you know, snacks throughout the day because eating too much at once can cause problems, like you said, uh, with dumping syndrome. I do want to go back to the body fat test, though, because when you're testing, especially even it's especially skimfold, when I'm doing someone who's super obese, boy, the, 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 the error that I can measure with that is tremendous. Like, like how much should she weigh the first time you tested her versus the second time you tested her? Like, what is her weight at now? And where was she when you first did her body fat test? Do you know? Yeah, so she came in, um, she was 186, 186, and now she is budged at 162. Okay. Well, that's not so, too That's not too heavy, but... You, you, no, so it's, it's not as hard, but yeah. it's still 
interest. I, yeah, but again, I mean, you know, I, I, I never tested body fat with mm-hmm. bariatric patients. I didn't even, I we didn't even t- say that. We didn't yeah. even talk about that. No, that wasn't part of the conversation. I think, you know, the focus with that, they've, you know, it obviously taken extreme measures to lose the weight. Uh, at this point now, as a trainer, uh, to be able to establish uh, building muscle as the the main goal and objective, and getting active, you know, recovery with that, and being able to implement these better habits uh, is uh, the utmost priority. So to focus on the strength part of it and really just keep, you know, reiterating, it's going to take a while. Like this extreme, um, you know, shift. Now we have to really kind of take, you know, all these steps, which is going to take take a lot of time to establish, you know, a, a built, repaired a metabolism to be able to kind of go forward from here. And yeah. increasing the calories through carbs and fat, I think is fine so long as she's getting at least the, the bare minimum protein. So I, I would, that's the one thing. Otherwise, we're going to lose, mu- continue to lose muscle. If she's eating 20 grams of protein every day and uh, mm-hmm. the rest is most carbs and fat to get to her 1,200 or so calories then, uh, you know, you can do all the strength training in the world, uh, you know, in a caloric deficit and grossly under consuming protein, we're going to lose yeah, muscles. Minim- yeah. Minimum, we want to hit like 70 grams. Or yeah. That so that, that's how I would decide on how, what those calories come from is, you know, if she's hitting a good amount of 60 to 80 grams of protein, at least, okay, well we could, you know, eat whatever feels the best for you, whether that be carbs, fat or protein. Okay. But if she's grossly under eating protein, 20 to 30, say even 40 grams of protein every day, then I'd be encouraging those extra calories to come from okay. protein. Consider this, Anna. You're working with the hardest, one of the hardest uh, segments of the population in terms of getting someone to achieve permanent success with fitness and nutrition. It's one of the most challenging segments of the population. So think that way the entire time. What you don't want to do is think of goals short term, but rather, how can I get this person to develop a relationship with exercise and nutrition to where they'll be able to maintain it forever? Mm-hmm. Okay, all always and forever. They've already. I mean, it's it's we can we can guess that they probably had a bad relationship to food to begin with, and exercise is very closely connected to that. So measurements, body fat tests, weigh yourself, That's macros, fluctuate. counting calories, like that can all be a stress and make it feel negative and all that stuff. So I like to really focus on performance. Like imagine if this client really started to just love, they stopped thinking about their weight and really just love the getting faster, getting stronger, being able to do new exercises and move in different ways and enjoy that. The, the often side effect of that is they eat better. They start to eat to fuel their body. They start to develop this relationship with exercise where they, I just love doing it. I just love going to the gym because I feel good and I love moving and I love doing these new exercises I couldn't do before. So that's really the direction that I would say to focus on because don't think of yourself so much as a, I'm a trainer, I need to produce produce results for this person. Think of yourself as more of a guide and I need to lead them to a, a, a situation where this person now has achieved permanent success. I don't know if you're familiar with the the long-term fail rate, even with bi- you know, with bi- uh, bariatric patients, it's not very good. So that's where I would place uh, my entire focus, at least in, in, that's what I did. And I still didn't have the greatest success rate, but it was better than when you looked at the averages. Gotcha. Yeah, no, she she's starting to get there. And I, um, I mean, I started working with her when she'd already dropped a lot of weight. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. After those initial months, you start losing really quickly. So she, she was already, um, uh, down pretty much. And she, uh, the other day tried to pick up the 45 pound barbell and like curl it for like 12. So she's getting into the oh, strength nice. part of it. And I think the strength is actually what's exciting her. So, Excellent. Excellent. Perfect. All right. Yeah. Well, perfect. Well, thank you for calling in. And actually, um, you know, I wonder if this person would benefit from our intuitive nutrition guide. Do you have that? Uh, no, I do not. No. Let me send that over to you. Um, you could read through it and pull from it, and it might help you communicate with this particular client uh, in in a healthy way with nutrition. There's some some good stuff in there. Awesome. Sounds good. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks, you, Anna. Anna. Right. I appreciate it, guys. I re- do. You guys remember? So I know you guys have worked with clients who've been uh, trained quite this. a few. Yeah, yeah, and I know that the the 24 hour Santa Teresa there was, there was a the clinic right, right across there was a the clinic street. there. I worked, and I remember my first time working with this population, and it's very, very challenging. The, I remember the first client I had, I got them, they, they lost lots of weight, got them in shape, you know, we did the whole you know meal plan, the whole deal. Mm-hmm. Didn't see them for years, 
ran into them later, and I could not believe how much of the weight they had gained back. I thought it was impossible to gain the weight back. Oh, I know. But I guess, you know, through just sheer will and just, you know, not having a great relationship with nutrition and food, they were able to do it. And I remember thinking to myself, like, I, I need a completely different approach. Oh, same thing happens, like, not addressing the root of it all. And um, it, it was so frustrating to see that. But I, again, it's so addictive once you start losing weight. Like that's like one of those things like to, to slow them down and to be able to kind of uh, really address it through, you know, behavior uh, and to, to change those behaviors uh, later on in my career. Like I figured, you know, how to do that and how to communicate that a lot better. But I mean, you're, you're their cheerleader in a sense too. Like you want them to lose the weight because you think the weight is really the, the biggest issue that's keeping them unhealthy. And then you, you, you know, further on realize, oh, well, you know, this, this, you know, root of this behavior hasn't been, uh, addressed yet. And so therefore, mm -hmm. you know, this is going to keep coming back and something that you got to keep continually dealing with. Well, and for all of the trainers that are listening to this, the, uh, and that have clients like this, it's very normal to see the body fat percentage go up like that. So that's why I was trying to stress that. Like, it really doesn't matter what they're using. I mean, did you even test body fat for clients yeah. no, like this? I know. No. And, that, and that's part of the reason why you don't worry about that because it's, it's not good news. You get back, right. you know, you're, they're training with you three days a week. They're doing yeah. what they're supposed to strength training. They've got a good balance in their, their uh, macros. Uh, you would like to show them, Oh, look, we got, you know, you lost 30 pounds the last two weeks, but we got uh, more muscle. Like, right. The reality is their their calories are so low, and they can't absorb very. Yeah, never really going to lose muscle with it. That's yeah. right. It's they're just they're gonna they're gonna plummet, and really the the strength training aspect of it is just to slow down uh, the atrophy of muscle during that yeah. process. That's the sad truth, isn't it? Yeah, because yep. it's inevitable because of how low a calorie they are. And then again, back to my point about the protein, that would be my biggest concern as far as helping slowing that process down because. If she is eating only 1,200 calories and only eating 20 to 40 grams of protein, that's going to continue for a while. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's going to continue for quite some time before her body probably levels out or else she's going to mm -hmm. continue to see body fat go up even with the scale going down. Our next caller is Jackie from Virginia. Hey, Jackie, how can we help you? Hey, um, first of all, this is super cool. So um, I listen to you guys pretty much every day. And if there isn't a new episode out, I go to the archive and listen to something there. So yeah. I'm a coach myself. I find a ton of value in the content you're putting out. So thanks for all you guys do. Thank you. Red. Um, yeah. So a little background on me. Um, I currently compete in Olympic weightlifting at a pretty high level. I've been competing for six years. And in that time, I've won two national championships, an American Open championship, 20 national medals. I've competed on Team USA. Wow. And I'm just getting to a point where I'm in my mid-30s. I've accomplished all of my goals and more in the sport, but I also have a full-time job completely outside of fitness, and I coach on the side, so I'm just kind of ready to retire. Um, I've also been an athlete my whole life, so I started out as a gymnast. I did that for over 15 years. And then I just went into normal strength training in college. I did some CrossFit and that's what introduced me to Olympic weightlifting, but I've always been strong pretty much my whole life. Um, especially from gymnastics and just having like good genetics. Um, I tend to keep on muscle and have really strong legs. Um, so I, I can squat over 350 pounds. Um, my deadlift is about the same because I'm super quad dominant. So yeah, I've been strong my whole life, been an athlete my whole life. And now I'm looking at the next chapter of being in my mid thirties and wanting to maintain a strong physique, but I also don't need to be as strong as I currently am. Cause if I'm not competing, I don't need to be able to squat over 350 pounds. Um, I'm not looking to, but I also want to be strong and strength train. So for one, I'm pretty lost on which program I should do. Uh, because I've been training really hard for so long, but I'm afraid that if I don't train enough, I'll gain body fat and lose a ton of muscle. So I'm trying to figure out what the best program is for me to start with. So you came um, to us for awesome. a program that will get you not as strong. <laughs> is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, but like, I want to like, I'm like, I'm five, three ish. Um, like five, between five, three and five, four, I weigh 145 pounds. Um, but I cut down to the 64 kilo class for competition. Um, so I feel like I could lose like 10 pounds to get to a physique that makes me happy and still be strong. Cause I'm not trying to be like, I have giant quads, but like, I'm pretty lean. Um, but I just want to like 
change my body composition um, and yeah, get get to a point where I can also eat at maintenance because right now I cut for competition back and forth. So, you know, I haven't been able to actually reverse diet um, because I don't have enough time in between competitions to do so. So I'm trying to also like get to a place where I can eat like a normal person and all that. that it would well. be a, a blast to train. <laughs> yeah. oh, I would yeah. love to train. I can't wait to hear what everyone. I bet you were all going to have different opinions Maybe, because you probably. could you could go a different a lot of different directions. Well, I mean, I have some good news and some bad news. So here's the good <laughs> news: with with someone of your caliber, you can do whatever the hell you want, yeah. and you'll be fine. Okay, that's the truth. Now I can't say that to everybody, but someone like you with your obvious uh, great genetics and how responsive you are to resistance <laughs> training, you can do whatever you want, and you'd probably get. Oh, great results, no matter what. Here's the bad news. It's going to be hard to lose muscle. So because yeah. your body's so responsive, the only way you could lose muscle in a relatively healthy way would be to focus on endurance training. And that would probably do it a little bit, although I wouldn't get too excited about it because I've seen people like mm. you do endurance training and not lose that much muscle. Not to mention they just she hold wrote, on to it. And not to mention she wrote that she hates cardio. Exactly. Too, so yeah. I mean that's the I do. that's the good news and bad news. Now what I would go if I were you is mean something, more of a maps aesthetic route. Because, uh, see, I was gonna push yeah. her performance than aesthetic. Well we performance would be good too, but here's why I said aesthetic is because the, I, with I, the focus I, sessions, yes. you could go to the gym and be more like a bodybuilder mm -hmm. and sculpt your body and not train your quads as much, maybe focus more more on your hamstrings and just focus on the parts of your body you really want to develop and kind of neglect the parts you don't want to develop as much. You can really have fun with MAPS Aesthetic because it allows so much of that, uh, that uh, you know, modifiability in there, right? Right. Yeah, I was going to say uh, that for that specific reason of the focus sessions and just to kind of get you outside of uh, the compound lifts a bit and, and really just kind of um, take your body as, uh, you know, individual muscle groups that we're really like hyper focused on. But then also too, you mentioned you hate cardio to me, that speaks like something that you, maybe your body needs uh, to venture into that a bit, lean into, you know, the cardiovascular aspect of it and just challenge yourself through that, which then you can, you know, maybe see the benefit of that going forward and, and your body responsive in that direction. Okay. Well, it sounds like we all are a little bit closer than I thought we were going to mm -hmm. be. Because you're right. I, to your point, Sal, I 100% think that you could go a bunch of different directions and we could have success a lot of different ways. I did ultimately want you in MAPS Aesthetic. Um, I was going to say performance first. Just because I know that uh, I know Olympic lifting is obviously more dynamic than like powerlifting, but sometimes we tend to do a lot of like you know sagittal plane exercises primarily. There's not a lot of multi-directional exercises that you're probably doing, and so I think you could benefit from that. Um, and because I think that there's a lot of unique exercise in there, so I think your body would respond well. That, but I do think that a kind of bodybuilder esque type of of a routine would do you really, really well. So maps aesthetic, I agree. The one add to that I would add to that is my prescription on that. If we were to go to Maps Aesthetic, I would love to see you, even though I know you don't like it or want it, I would try and push you towards 30 minutes of cardio with your focus days. So the way the program's structured is there's three foundational days and then you have two to three uh, focus days. On those two to three focus days when you are focusing on the, which is basically a, like a 20 minute workout, 20 to 30 minutes, uh, I would spend the other 20 to 30 minutes doing some cardio. And it doesn't need to be crazy intense. Um, you could have fun with it, Stairmaster stuff, electrical stuff, power walking on an incline, um, you know, row for a while. You could have some fun. But I, I would encourage us to do some cardiovascular training like that for about 30 to 40 minutes on the same days that we do focus training with maps aesthetic. I think the combination of that, I think your body will respond really well. Yeah. Now, now one, here's another route you can go Jackie. And I would almost never recommend this to most people. Okay. Because <laughs> okay. you did mention you have a full, your full-time job and obviously you're not going to be competing at that same level. So maybe you want to work out less. Maybe you don't want to work out five or six days a week. You're one of the few people that could get away with this. You could go to the gym three or four days a week and literally do focus on whatever you want. Like literally, you could go to the gym. You're probably so hyper responsive to resistance training. You could look in the mirror and be like, I want to work on my back a little more, so I'm going to do a little back today. Or mm -hmm. you know what? My shoulders, I want to develop a little more. Let me. My quads are really big. I think I'll avoid quad training for the next three weeks or whatever. You could totally get away with going to the gym and kind of doing what you want and having a little bit of fun with watching your body shape and sculpt 
based on what you do. Most people's bodies are not responsive enough to mm-hmm. do that. They just wouldn't see their body change quick enough for them to be able to make those judgments. But in your case, you're 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 literally one of the you know one percent or probably less. I would <laughs> say you could go to the gym literally three four days a week and kind of do whatever you want and look at your body and say I want to do a little this a little that. And like I said when you I first answered your question. Any direction you go, so long as you don't hurt yourself and overdo it, you're you're gonna do fine. So that's the kind of cool. Part. I, I think she she did bring up a concern though that would be a concern of mine of reducing the volume too much. Is that because she's got a lot of muscle? She's probably been training her ass off like crazy. She probably has created a high demand of calories for her body. So if all of a sudden you dramatically reduce the volume of training, I would imagine she's gonna have to to change the calories. Whereas if she does something like MAPS Aesthetic, which is a, one of our higher volume programs, in addition to 30 minutes of cardio two to three times a week, I think that's enough calorie burn that she won't have to reduce I, her. I agree, but you know what's funny? So, I, so Jackie, I've, I've only really trained a few people that I would say are probably in your, uh, like the kind of genetics that you have that really competed at super high levels. And so what Adam's mm-hmm. saying is you cut your volume down. Oh, no, I'm gaining some body fat. What I noticed with these few people that I trained is they literally like, oh no, I gained a little bit of body fat. I'm going to work out a little more. Body fat's gone. It's like, it just responds very quickly. Yeah. Whereas most people are like, oh my gosh, I'm stuck. What do I do? And I'm, I'm sure, is what I'm saying resonating? Do you feel like you could just kind of pick it up a little bit and watch your body change? Yeah. I mean, I, like, I love training, like obviously, because I've been doing it for so long at such a high level. So I don't necessarily want to like, stop going to the gym on a regular basis. Um, but I'm, I'm just trying to change up like what I'm doing, not put so much stress on my body because I've been putting it through the ringer for a, quite a number of years. Um, and also doing like those extreme cuts um, yeah. for competition. Mm-hmm. Like I end up water cutting most of the weight um, that I need to like right before the meet, but like kind of like a fighter would, but mm. um, but I'm still restricting calories so that I don't gain weight. So um you know, it's, it's hard to, I guess, figure out which route is the right one. But I feel like when you, when you say like aesthetic, adding some cardio and like maybe that's. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that. I think I'm standing by what I say. I think maps aesthetic, (laughs) 30 minutes of cardio, two to three times a week on your focus days. It still allows, you're going to the gym six, five, six days a week minimum, which you probably like to do anyways. You're just changing the focus. If you're not stressful on your joints. Yeah. Yeah. Not stressful on the joints. It's bodybuilder style. So So it's really phenomenal for your body. Awesome. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense because it's way different than how I train now. Totally. And I think my body would probably respond yep. well to that. Well, Jack, if you don't have it, we'll send it over to you, okay? Yeah. Oh, awesome. Thank I'd, you guys so much. I'd like to add to her too because you'd be a fun client to listen to and talk. Could you add her to the forum too, Doug? And I would love to hear your process through. I don't know how often you use Facebook. Hopefully you get on there. I don't know. Um, if you do, I would love to see you in the forum. So I'm going to give you access to the private forum because uh, you are somebody like back to Sal's point. This you, would be fun to try. Yeah, you would be fun. Like we could be going through Maps Aesthetic and you'd be like, oh, you know, my quads, you guys. And we'd be like, you know you what? See changes pretty drop, quickly. Drop this exercise and that exercise that are in that program. Let's switch it yeah. and put this in instead. And like you'd be a fun person to, and I can easily help without having to get, like feel like I'm having to coach you full time. You'd be real easy to tweak some things. So if you cool. go if you go in the forum and you actually share with us what what you're doing, what you're going through, what you're seeing, uh, you know, one of us three will get on there and give you tweaks. Awesome, that sounds great. Thank you so much. No problem. <laughs> Thanks for calling in. Right on, Jackie. Cool. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you guys. Yeah, cool to have someone of that caliber. Oh, it would be a fun client. Call on and Those are but, the best. But I tell you, well, they're the best. If people need to know. Here's why they're the best. It's <laughs> like you, anything you do, something happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you that's like a champion, right? Yeah. Just, that's why. <laughs> that's why it's uh, fun. Well, a couple things too, right? So you know, if she's that talent, that you know that I like. This is what I love about clients too. When you teach like a new movement, I could say things like, "Oh, tuck your tailbone. Oh, pull the shoulders back. Oh, head up, Joe, chin in." Like, and it you happens. Could, yeah, yeah. And it happens. You could cue them right. like that, and they they just their body will snap right. Right into yeah. it, which is fun and of, to teach and of all the strength athlete athlete based sports olympic lifters are among the most athletic yeah. you could literally I, i've seen olympic lifters play who play no sports watch them do stuff and they're it's not like a bodybuilder or a power lifter like yeah. they can move 
then they can move dynamically. So Bro, it's the thir- highest like technical lifting yes. uh, sport. Dude, yeah. 335 squat at 145. 355. 355 at 143. Her, or- she competes at 62 kilograms. So that's 130 <laughs> something pounds that she competes at. Savage. I mean, that's insane. Yeah, that's sick. Yeah, tremendous strength and power. But, you know, I, I guess the challenge at that level is how do i move, how do i scale down right because you compete at a national level mm-hmm. that's more of a mental challenge i think than anything it's like sure. how do i bring it down because i'm no longer competing at this this ridiculous level our next caller is matt from new york hey what's up matt how can we help you hey guys so um a little backstory so i was around like i'm five nine i was around like 230 pounds i dropped about 60 pounds Last year, I was doing a lot of running, a lot of weightlifting as well. I, but I came to realize how hard it is to keep that weight off after doing all that running. I was running about 30 miles a week. And uh, I was wondering, now that I've gained about like nine pounds back since then, I'm about like 179 right now. Is there a way that I could build muscle and drop a little bit of body fat while maintaining the same, the same weight? Or do I have to bulk and then cut? No, hundred percent could do that. You can. I, um, it's hard. Uh, I, you know, you might want you the Goldilocks zone. Yeah, you might end up gaining a little bit, but if you if you're if you put your calories at a small surplus, so a little bit above maintenance, it makes it much more likely. And then just focus on strength. Am I getting stronger in the gym? Do I feel more stable? Um, that'll make the biggest impact. And then what you do is you slowly increase your calories from there, so that you can get your metabolism to keep a boosting. Um, so that it be, it's more maintainable. Because what you experience is what we talk about all the time, where people lose a lot of weight but place so much focus on this kind of manual calorie burning mm-hmm. that they find themselves in a position where it's impossible to maintain. I actually think this is uh, a little bit easier than what people think it is. It's tougher mentally. right? The, that's the, the toughest part of this is that we we allow the scale of up and down a little bit or even the mirror, what we see in the mirror, to all of a sudden uh, – dictate what you do inside the gym or what you do with your calories. I mean, honestly, if if your goal is to, hey, I want to build some strength, build some muscle, I also want to lose some body fat at the same time, then the goal really is to kind of hover around the same on the scale like that. So you don't want to see too much north or south on there and just get stronger in the gym. So you basically are feeding the body what feels right and normal, which sounds, I know, uh, vague, but that's the goal is to eat to where you're satisfied. Don't overconsume. Don't really try and restrict. Have good balance. Make sure you hit your protein intake and then get stronger in the gym, but don't eat an uh, over on the calories to where you're kind of staying the same with scale. Mm-hmm. If you do that, you know, and, and you focus on kind of hovering there while you're strength training and eating a balanced diet, the body will kind of naturally do this. You, you know, you'll have times where you're probably a little bit in a deficit. So the body utilizes some fat for energy. And then you'll have times where you're a little bit naturally above on calories. Some of that will get uh, partitioned over to building muscle and you should have this nice little exchange. It's the mental part that fucks with people because they go, oh, okay, here's where I need to be calorie wise. And because the scale isn't moving in a direction, they all of a sudden change things up. But um, this this is how like when I'm whenever I'm training and dieting, like if I have a goal in mind, it doesn't matter. Like this is kind of where I want to be. I, I don't want to see huge swings in any direction. That tells me that I'm feeding the body uh, adequate calories, and I know if I'm training consistently and following a good program, I'll build muscle, and then the body will probably lose some fat along the way. Okay, cool. Thanks, guys. I also have one. What are you fo- Matt? Are you following any of the Maps programs? What are you following right now? Yeah. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm following anabolic right now. I just started stage two uh, okay. today, actually. And yeah, I, uh, that was my, that was my second question. I had um, can I swap out for the trigger sessions? Can I use um, a suspension trainer rather than using the uh, the bands? Yes, you can. Mm-hmm. And any any kind of resistance training can replace the bands. The only key is don't overdo the intensity, right. which is easy to do. So yeah, yeah, and the reason why we recommend bands is just because it's a little less damaging too. So you get a nice pump, uh, and you don't really exceed that intensity uh, very often. Yeah, that's the one thing I'd caution about suspension trainer. I mean, like if you do a suspension trainer and you make it pretty easy to do push ups and to do some like rows on it, even some curls and uh, tricep extensions, all great exercises for the suspension trainer and can do the triggers, but. 
you don't want to be struggling to get that 15th rep. If you do 15 and you barely, your arms are shaking to get 59, your too intensity much. is probably yeah. too high. You're so just trying to keep driving that signal. Yeah. So whatever you use, because obviously you're not using weight, you're using the leverage of your body. Make sure you don't leverage it so much that you're struggling to get 15 reps. You should be able to do 15 to 20 reps relatively easy. If that's the case, then you're probably doing the right intensity for the trigger sessions. Does that make sense? Okay, cool. All right, perfect. Sounds good. Thanks uh, for calling in, Matt. Thank you, guys. I appreciate everything. No problem. All right. Yeah, that's that's the the eternal struggle. It's like I lose all this weight, but what I did to get there is unsustainable. Yeah, I can't keep, keep it up. What do I do now? I mean, if people only it's like eighty something percent plus fail rate after people lose a lot of weight. It's really not a weight loss issue. It's a keep weight off. Well, this is issue. part of why, though. Yeah. I mean, I, I, totally. I feel like lately, I don't know why, I don't know if it's because we've talked about this on the show more often than not, is the whole cardio thing mm -hmm. that we've been getting yeah. flack for. Yeah. Like, you guys are so anti-cardio. It's like, no, this we're is not. the perfect case, uh, well, you know, in point of why this we is bring a, it up. This is the most common thing. Yeah. This, is, this is more common than the other way around. Most people use it as this tool to get down to a certain they weight. Abuse it. Abuse it. Yeah. Right yeah, I know, but they don't think they're abusing right. it though. So right. I don't like to use it because then someone goes, oh, I don't abuse it. I'm yeah. only doing it so many, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, you well, don't it's think- It's the fast lo fat loss button. It's just yeah. like that button. They have. They think that they have to keep hitting that button uh, in order to keep uh, shaving down the-, the Yeah, fat. and in insert any starting point, any sex, it doesn't matter, but using cardio as one of the main tools to get yourself down 30, 40, 60, whatever pounds. Not, not long-term effect. Yeah, unless you're- I love doing that. Like if you like, if one of your favorite things is to get up now and go for a run in the morning and you want to make that a lifelong pursuit and you never stop that, then by all means, but that's not what happens. Mm -hmm. Most people that decide they're going to start doing five to six days or 30 miles of cardio are doing it because they have this massive weight loss goal. Mm -hmm. And that is a, that's a fast way to get there. Problem is, as soon as you stop doing that, the weight's going to pile mm -hmm. back on. So Keeps that's why that's why we don't like to recommend people in that direction because now you're in this shitty situation versus how do we built a good meal plan and built a program for fat loss around resistance training and just moving and walking more throughout the day, way more sustainable for this person for the rest of their life. Our next caller is Zachary from Boston. Hey, what's up, Zach? How can we help you? Hey, how's it going, guys? Thanks for having me. Um, was just curious. So every four days or so, uh, I work in a hospital and we'll work 28 hour shifts pretty regularly. Um, so been trying to bulk for the last uh, few months here, but the lack of sleep and kind of rotating schedule has been an issue. And was curious if you'd had clients with this similar sort of issue or any sort of advice uh, to kind of address this. Yeah. Okay. So really good question. So because of the every four day, 28 hour schedule, you're, you put yourself in a bad position in the sense that you, your, your body is not going to be able to handle normal workouts or workout loads or, or stress because you're already putting quite a bit of stress on your body. No matter, even if everything's perfect, that alone is a very challenging thing for the body. So you have to work out very little in order to build muscle. So that's the good news. The appropriate dose is going to get your body to adapt. The appropriate dose for you is a lot less than it would be if you did not work this kind of a schedule. So when people that I've worked with in this particular case, when I've trained people like this, you're looking at a couple days a week of resistance training, like two days a week, too, yeah. and you're doing full body routine. You're going moderate intensity. You're focusing on building strength. And then as far as the bulk is concerned, of course, that's just a matter of a caloric surplus. Make sure you hit your protein eat about 500 calories or so above maintenance, and you should be okay. If you're getting stronger, then you know you're on the right track. Yeah, I, I was going to recommend MAPS Anabolic two to three times, and the two to three times would, would depend on the, the way this is broken up. So it, it's not once a week you have this 28-hour shift. It's literally every fourth day you have 24, 28 hours. So within an eight-day period, you could actually have two of these days being 28-hour days, which would be over a day. Yeah, Okay. yeah. So yeah, so you're right. Probably one to two days a week. One to two days a week mm -hmm. max is yeah, what I would do. Training. You know, and I would may maybe even you. You might even especially be trying to bulk too. That's the other thing. Yeah, you might even want to do it this way. Um, so that so you go 28 hours, then you're off for four days. So what you may want to do is after your 28 hour shift, don't work out the day after. 
work out the second day, and that's your one workout, and then wait till the next cycle happens again. Start with that. Mm -hmm. Go to the gym, do a full body workout, one exercise per body part, about three sets. Focus on compound lifts, not lots of volume, not lots of intensity, and then see if you can get stronger. I mean, you know, you could add some restorative like I was just mobility or call, like, trigger session, like in the in between days where it's just you know it's really low to moderate uh, type of uh, muscle contraction or you know activity wise. Uh, but that would help to you know at least get your body to to recuperate and restore and and you know with that amount of stress you know and, and it already being absorbed in your bucket from having this type of a schedule, you just got to be mindful that it's all got to stay at a low intensity. You know what we. Can what we could do is we could go a MAPS anabolic foundational day one day on the day that Sal said. So the second day after after worship. But the day before and the day after could both be trigger sessions. Yeah. Yeah. So you could do a so I would take the MAPS anabolic. I would use the one of the main foundational days. That's your workout routine. And then I would take the trigger session workouts. That would be the day before and then the day after. That's how I would sure, that so could that's, work. That's what it looks and that that way you're getting three days to kind of touch in and you only got one really hard, high intense day. The other two days are more like recovery focused, mm -hmm. but then also kind of just touching the muscles. That's what I would do right now. Now, how's your nutrition with all this? Are you able to uh, intake a lot of whole foods or is this a struggle? Yeah, I mean, try to, but it's tough because the, uh, I mean, obviously when you're up for 28 hours, kind of just meal timing is difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, try to do as much as you can with the whole foods, um, but honestly, less is more here. Don't, don't push your body to see how much you can do, but rather see how much you can get away with, with as little as you can do because the, your, the, the sleep, and I'm sure you're familiar with this. You work in medicine. So I'm sure you've seen the statistics on swing shifts and this kind of schedule on the human body. It's a tremendous stress. Exercise is another stress. So you have to consider that. So it's like when, you know, when my son was the first six months of his life, uh, I'm not, you know, training like an animal in the gym. My body can't handle it, and I'm just not going to – my body's just not going to respond. So take it that way. Now, if you do this with MAPS Anabolic, what you literally do is you're not looking at a seven-day cycle like most workouts, right? Because it will give you the option of two workouts or three workouts, foundational, every week. Literally just do one foundational workout when, it, when you do that second day after your shift is up, and then the next foundational workout is the next time it's up. And don't worry about – a, you know, a monthly or weekly schedule, the way it's broken up. Yours is obviously very different. So just do it, do it like that. And then I'd love to get some feedback uh, from you to see how your body, you know, feels and responds. Yeah, sounds good. Appreciate that. No problem, Zach. Thanks for calling in. He's a Lego maniac. He just he Zach. just came off of one of the shifts. It sounds like. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I tell you what, dude. One uh, of the hardest to help, bro. Right there. If you yeah. read the statistics on shifts like this, the, the it's like a carcinogenic. It, their cancer risk is yeah. it goes up. Like if they smoke cigarettes, their heart disease risk goes up. Their diabetes. I mean, it's it's a it's a huge and so. This the lesson of this the stress is, that your trainer adds by telling you all those things. <laughs> <laughs> we just want to move you out of that schedule. He's like, yeah, I was like, already stressed well, out. Well, you know what? Fucking Sal said that. Now I'm really you know what's stressed funny? out. <laughs> I've trained so I've trained a lot of people like this, and you know what's funny? They tend to have this is they're attracted to this kind of work, right? Yeah. So I've trained ER doctors that are just insane, and I literally have to say this to them because their mentality is go 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 no matter what. Oh, yeah. I should do push it. through. Yes, yeah. and I'm like, no, you can't. You're gonna hurt yourself. It's this is totally bad for you. And because they're in medicine, sometimes statistics tend to help. So that's why I do a little bit of the fear, uh, you know, type of stuff with them. But I mean, you can you can progress. You just got to remember it's another stress you're adding to your body, and you're probably almost at your limit. So it's not much that you can you can. I mean, I body. love the idea of a, a one hard training session in the middle, like you yeah. said, timing that right. So whatever the breakdown is, the middle day after you've got a nice recover day mm -hmm. of recovery rest from that long shift. And then on the other days, uh, and they could be all the days because it's so light. You could do these light band works, band work or suspension trainer, one or the other or both I'd have access to. And then I would be like, okay, I'm in the, the, the way I train is I get after it really hard this one day. And that's my full hour, an hour and a half routine where I do the full body. And then the other two to three days, it's this real light kind of band mm -hmm. work or body weight work. And that's all I would try and do. But I mean, you can make some moves on that for sure. Definitely. Uh, excellent. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our guides. So we have guides that we wrote that can help you build muscle or burn body fat, improve your health, move better, squat better. We have guides for personal trainers. There's a lot of stuff there. So head over again to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free 
guides and information. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump Sal. And Adam is at Mind Pump Adam.